to the Retirement Guys with Doug Harbaugh and Luke Lloyd with Strategic Wealth Partners. They have decades of experience under one roof helping folks just like you with their retirement plans here in the Independence, Cleveland, Northeast Ohio area. You want to find out more? Go to the website, trg.swpconnect.com, trg.swpconnect.com. And, of course, maybe you got questions. Hey, it's been kind of a tough 2020 so far. Maybe you got some questions or some concerns. Uh, it's a great time to kind of raise your hand and ask a question. Doug and, and Luke and the team are here to help guide you along the way. A lot of advisors charge 200 to to $1,000 for this phone call. Doug does not because he's here to help, but he doesn't know if he can help you yet. So it really starts with this phone call, 216-800-9890, We'll give you that phone call or that phone number throughout the program. Program. Glad you're with us today. I'm Mark Elliott. Uh, let's let's talk about some things. That, you know, when when the markets go bad, and Doug, this was kind of a, a surprising stat to me. I'm 60, mm -hmm. and Fidelity said that when March happened with the 30, 35 percent drop in the markets, that those that were 65 and older, 30 percent went to cash. Now that happened back in 2008, where people go, "Wow, my 401k is a 201k. I've just lost half my money. I'm never going to retire. I've got to go to cash." Are there safer things we can do other than just losing money safely and not keeping up with inflation with our money? Good morning, Vietnam. I always wanted to say that on the radio after I saw Robin Williams do it years ago. It was not as good as Robin Williams. <laughs> no, I didn't want to yell because I was too close to the mic. Um, yeah, if you want to avoid the napalm of the financial world, um, there are some things that we can do. Um, interesting uh, thing I was reading through advisor perspectives, um, was that during the uh, crash, they polled, you know, about 700,000 people. And believe it or not, 6% um, are, only 6% of the people um, polled of the 700,000 actually made changes to their portfolio. Um, and then they went through and did the additional poll and found that only 16% of the total actually logged into their accounts. <laughs> yeah. Right? Obviously, they didn't want to know what was going on. So... <clears throat> I talk about it every week where I say that there's better ways to do things. And maybe I feel that some of you are missing my point, or uh, maybe you feel that I am talking in a way that, you know, saying that this is bad or this is right or this is wrong. So instead of doing that, um, I would like to chat a little bit about, you know, what you can do to safeguard your money to help you get that retirement income check in retirement. And there are ways to do it very specifically, right? So what we're going to talk about today is annuities um, and where they fit and where they don't. Um, the biggest thing I think is um, there's a general um, confusion with them. And again, we've talked about it briefly in the past. And I'm going to tell you right now, I like them where they fit. Um, there's a specific way to do that. Um, but all of you are different out there that are listening. All of you would need a different form. So if 10 of you came into my office, um, and let's say all of you had a similar sized account, right? Let's say the number's 300,000, whatever it is. Of you, maybe two of you might have something similar, but there's gonna be a different incremental amount dependent on your individual retirement plan. So what we do is when we do a retirement plan, we run a Monte Carlo analysis, which is a probability analysis that lets us know if a scenario works better than another. When we run the scenario, we will put in, okay, we're gonna have $200,000 in growth. We're gonna have $100,000 into an income annuity of which you would use for an income stream. And then we run the probability analysis and it gives us a score of zero to 100. Well, if the score comes back a zero or 20 or a 30, we go, well, what caused that? Was it spending? Was it you're retiring too early? Was it we put too much into the annuity, right? Or maybe not enough, right? So there's different ways to look at annuities when you put them together. And there's two primary sources. And the first one we'll talk about is an income annuity. Okay. I think there's a lot of confusion when it comes to income annuities. Um, I mean, Luke, when you talk to people, um, I know you're newer to the business, but uh, what do you think the common misconceptions with income annuities are? The common misconceptions, I'd say, I mean, when it comes down to it, they all do something a little unique, a little, little bit different, right? So 
Um, you have to understand what exactly they do. And most people think that they're very basic, right? You put the money in, you're going to generate income stream down the road. It's not going to grow at all. But that's kind of a misconception because it is going to grow. Not only are you going to get some growth maybe on uh, what it's invested in, if it's invested in the market, you're going to pay some type of you know rider maybe to get the income stream in the future. But some of these incomes that's coming in, it's growing maybe at 7 7 7.5% per year. Okay. So every year you defer it, you're actually getting growth on the income. See, I think one of the people or one of the people's problems with annuities is they feel that um, their income stream is going to stop, meaning that they're going to annuitize. Right. And when they run out of money, their income stream will stop. So some older annuities did that, right. where it would only pay for 20 years or it would pay until you ran out of cash flow. Where now the income annuities that are created, that you can actually have income for life and sometimes income for life on both of you. So if you're married, you can actually put some money into one of these income annuities. And again, these are things that work better if you allow for them to grow for you for a few years. And then once you turn on the income stream, that income stream will pay on both lives. Yeah. And not only that, I think another misconception we see, and again, they all do something a little bit different, but there can be a death benefit left over as well if you right. only use it for a couple of years, right? So again, you mentioned that annuitized, how old annuities work. You would annuitize it. Once you annuitize it, the money would be gone. You could never access it. It would never pass on to any beneficiaries. But a lot of these newer products, it will grow. You maybe turn on the income stream for both um, both beneficiaries, you and, and a spouse, and then use it maybe five, six years, and then there might be some money left over that's going to pass on to your heirs. Correct. And that's where a lot of people go, well, if this thing doesn't grow that much on the cash side and I run income for 20 years, is there going to be anything left for my heirs? And I can typically calculate and say, within reason, and if you withdraw it from this bucket and you only average, let's call it 2%, mm -hmm. I don't know, on the cash side. Yeah, absolutely. Something nominal. There's typically money left over. And it might for, be 2 or 3% because you're going to get some of the growth if you have right. it like in the S&P. You're going to get like some of the growth there. You're going to pay 1 or 2% per two percent on for the riders for the income and whatever else it'd be. So you might get 2% of growth per year average throughout life. So it's keeping up with the least inflation. You're taking maybe some income stream off of that top principle. But there's typically money left over if you use it for only a couple of years. Um, but like you said, you, the goal is for income streams uh, to last 30, 40 years all the way through uh, age 95, 100 if you live till then. And there's a way to do it right and there's a way to do it wrong. So I've talked about it in multiple shows that not all products are created equal. And throughout time, each insurance company will kind of be like the next best thing, mm -hmm. meaning that they've got the newest improved product and the old company made their product less enticing um, because they didn't want to accept any more business, right? Right. So you have to be cognizant of that when one of these life insurance agents try to sell you one of these things, they might be selling you an outdated annuity. Yeah, five years ago, it could have been great. And then now it's just not, it's not that great. And, and it still might be perfectly fine. And that's why I say if you have one of these old annuities and you have questions about it, you know, give me a call at 216-800-9890. I'd be happy to do a free review of your annuity and let you know, hey, you should keep it. Um, you should blow it up. And here's why and or here's a solution that can kind of fix what it is right i have occasionally run across old variable annuities and i hate the word variable but i've come across them where they were decent yeah but it's rare so if you have any of these annuities again give me a call 216 800 9890 9890 almost said the the regular phone number <laughs> and i'll be happy to review those annuities for you and explain to you the ins and outs of how they should really work for you in your retirement. So do you find though with the with annuities that, I mean the insurance companies you said, the insurance companies are a little bit more progressive, forward thinking it seems to me, and they're, they're always adjusting. These aren't our, our grandparents' annuities anymore. No. There's a lot of things in there, whether you get long-term care, you get you know guaranteed income for you and your spouse's wife or life, for example. I mean, they're, they're different, but annuities at the same time aren't right for everybody. So it kind of starts with that. Does an annuity make sense for you or does it not? Right. That's absolutely right. And that's why everyone's a little bit different. And I know that a lot of people want to go to safety. If And, and if you're one of those people that want to go to safety, um, I'll be happy to tell you if it's right for you. Right. I, I had a phone call today with one of my clients who's concerned about the economy and he's right to be concerned. Yeah. Right. And I said to my client, I'll be happy to go over every individualized position with you when I get back from Hilton Head. And I'll explain to you the rhyme and reason why you would hold these things. And if you are still uncomfortable with the world, I get it. 
I want you to feel good about yourself and I will give you a suitable alternative. And I don't know if, if just going to cash is the only thing for this guy or maybe an annuity fits in his world. I, I don't know, but yeah. I'm gonna go through everything and say, look, we all have different fears and thought processes. And what I wanna say is just because you are afraid of the market does not mean you should just run out and buy an right. annuity. So let's be very clear on that, right? There's way too many variables that's going on. Right, and we'll talk about some of those other annuities later in the show. So we have income annuities, we have fixed index annuities for growth, and then we have multi-year guaranteed mm -hmm. annuities, which we'll chat about. But one or the other may or may not fit for you, and you don't wanna just take the first thing offered to you. So if you've been offered something recently and you have questions about it, is this the right thing? Maybe you just signed up for something because you got a buyout. A lot of people at Delta, mm -hmm. United are getting buyouts right now. Yep. And you're getting those buyouts and a lot of people are freaked out about number one, not having a job. Number two, the stock market's scary and they want answers. And the last thing I want you to do is take that buyout and then buy an annuity with it. Yeah. That might I mean, be that the wrong be annuity. that could be definitely an irreversible financial mistake. We've talked about those in the past. Once you do something like that, you can't go back on that. So you can't go back, change your decision. That's gonna be an issue for the future, especially some of these annuities, you might be locked in there for 10 years. You've got to think that there are so many different products out there. I mean, was it Global Atlantic, mm -hmm. North American, Midland National, Security Benefit, Athene, um, a, a Merrillife, um, Jesus, Fidelity and Guarantee, Americo. Um, That's impressive, Doug. There's, Jesus, I can probably keep going. Um, there are a lot of them. Here's, here's a question <laughs> e I have. Equitrust. I got more. Equitrust. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Come on, There's five more. There's a lot of companies. There's a lot of companies that do annuities. And, and, the question and, is, is it the right one for you? But you said earlier, hey, if you have any of these annuities and they're old, you're not really sure it's the right one for you. Can we like trade them like you trade in a car and get a new car? I mean, can we take an annuity and slide it into the newer form or does that depend as well on the company and how it's all set up? It depends. American General, Western Southern. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, it depends. So some of these annuities have surrender charges associated with them and you have to look at it in a couple of different ways. Is the new thing that I'm moving to, um, does it make sense to surrender what I currently have, the cost of it? So what's, Fortunately, because there's better oversight on these things now, they won't let you just surrender an annuity just to surrender it to put it into another annuity. You have to have a reason to do so. And the reason has to be financially justifiable in order to do so. And do you know what the best thing about that is? What's is that? we can prove anything through mathematics, like we've talked about before. So oh, we can run man. all the math to figure out if it makes sense. Correct. Isn't, that, isn't that great? That's exciting. I'm excited about that fact that we like math. Yeah, a lot of people don't, so at least yeah. uh, you got to find somebody out there that likes math, and we'll, that's us. <laughs> we'll do the math for you. Yeah. So, again, if you have questions about this, we're going to delve into it a little bit deeper, obviously, moving forward here on the program today. 216-800-9890. An annuity might be right for you. It might not be right for you. They're not right for everybody. It's like you don't put all your money in the Wall Street world. You don't put all of your money in the banking world. You don't put all of your money in the insurance world. It'd be nice to have that, you know, kind of a diversified attack, if you will, for that retirement income that you need, and maybe just for the safety and protection of, of your retirement as well. Correct. So 216-800-9890 is the number. You want to talk to Doug. You want to talk to Luke. As Strategic Wealth Partners, you can always go to the website to find out more, trg.swpconnect.com, trg.swpconnect.com. And remember, there's a lot of different financial advisors. They're not all the same. There's a lot of car manufacturers. They're not the same. Think of any sh shop. You want a sandwich. There's a whole bunch of different places to get a sandwich, but they're not all created equal. Same thing in the annuity world. We're going to look a little deeper into the annuity world, talk about the different types, what makes sense for retirees, what maybe doesn't. That's where we're headed next. Stay with us. This is the Retirement Guys with Doug Harbaugh and Luke Lloyd with Strategic Wealth Partners. Glad you're with us today for the Retirement Guys with Doug Harbaugh and Luke Lloyd. They're with Strategic Wealth Partners. You can find out more on the website, trg.swpconnect.com, trg.swpconnect.com. If you have questions about anything here on the program today, it's 216-800-9890. There's no cost to give Doug and Luke a call, 216-800-9890. I'm Mark Elliott. Glad you're with us today, and we're talking about annuities today. And certainly today's annuities are not our grandparents' annuities. Uh, that was back when you always annuitized an annuity, and if you passed away, the insurance company kept your money. That is not the case today in most annuities, if you're going to get one of the newfangled uh, annuities. But there's a lot of different 
annuities out there, I guess, Doug. Maybe we should start with that. Kind of, you know, just like there, there's a lot of different financial advisors. Some are about growth. Some are about safety. Some are about this or that. I mean, they're, you're, you guys are all different. You're in the retirement planning world. You work in the Wall Street world, but you also work in the insurance world. And not all advisors work in both of those worlds. So the annuity world, how, I guess, maybe how do you break it down? How do I break it down? How do you break it Just down? Just like you dances, types, break down. Uh, I, yeah. you, you made me really think about um, doing some break dancing yeah, right now, I except know. if I, I like started it. to do some break dancing, I'd probably because just break some bones. Because you guys video bones. this, right? You guys video this yeah, on I, YouTube, yeah. so we'd like to see that. Let's hear it. There, uh, if you're watching this right now, it was not very good uh, dance moves. <laughs> I can actually dance fairly well. Okay. So <laughs> don't, don't, don't hate, congratulate. Um, it, so when I break it down, again, I break them down into... Um, the three usable annuities, right? So again, we have an income annuity. Its only purpose is income. Do not let anyone tell you otherwise. In a planning process, if we are looking for a retirement paycheck, right, that's what this is for. So in combination with your pensions, your Social Security, your stock dividends, your bond interest, things like that, this is purely income. Then we have fixed index annuities that are growth annuities, um, which... I don't think they really grow, <laughs> okay? And I'm just being honest. You can't lose money, but they're only going to grow at 3 to 4%, okay? Which is still growth. But it's a safe 3 or 4%. Yeah, you can't lose any money. And then you have multi-year guaranteed annuities, okay? So the MIGAs is what they're called, is something where it's like a CD, but it's a little bit longer and gives you a better interest rate. Um, a lot of people like using MIGAs, uh, especially currently, considering that um, interest rates are terrible. I mean, I know that currently you can get, you know, about a 3% multi-year guarantee, 2.5%. It depends, right? I mean, there's a lot of different companies that we work with. I mean, I'm looking at them right now, and there's probably, you know, 12 different companies in different MIGAs, different time frames, four-year MIGAs, five-year MIGAs. And their whole purpose is, is almost like a, a CD alternative with right. a better interest like, rate. Like you said, they're CD alternative, so you're locking up your liquidity, right? So you lock up for a certain amount of time. And that's why you mentioned like these people that are getting buyouts from whether employers, whether it be Delta or any kind of other employer, they're being these buyouts and they put all of this money into this illiquid product. Then they, they will never have access to that without surrendering, surrendering that money. Correct. And, getting a fee and for that. that's why you do it in a structure as such where let's say, again, you have that $300,000 bucket. There's nothing wrong with $25,000 of your money, $50,000 of your money being in a MIGA right. in a volatile market and being told you're going to get 25 or 3% guaranteed with no potential for loss. Right. You just don't want to put it all in there. Correct. And it's also when you look at saying an income annuity saying of that $300,000 buckets, maybe I took $100,000 because I won't need it for five years and I'm gonna let it grow and give me an income stream or an income paycheck in the future. So if, if you're out there and you're getting that lump sum, for the love of God, do not put all of it into one annuity. There's a better way to do it, and you can do it by planning, understanding your cash flows over the next couple of years, where your money is gonna come from. I was just talking to one of my clients who's being let go by United, getting a buyout, and I said, they're not gonna fight you on unemployment they're not gonna fight you on unemployment, so you're gonna get this buyout, and then you should qualify for unemployment due mm -hmm. to the fact of what's going on in the world right now. Right. And we'll look at that cash flow, and we'll give you a distribution plan from your accounts to make sure you don't run out of money. Right. And we'll come up with that final distribution plan and organization of money. How much is in bonds? How much is in ETFs? How much is in stocks? How much is in AMIGA? How much is in an income annuity? we'll be able to break that down, right? So that's, there's different annuities out there. Obviously, like I said, there's an income annuity. It's definitely for income. A growth annuity, it's kind of for growth, yeah. but well, you can't lose. Well, let's make something clear as well. So income annuity, look, I'm gonna tell you right now, indexed income annuities have not grown the last three years, right. period. They've barely grown. And the reason being is because at the end of, is it 17 or 18? I get so screwed up in my years. End of 18, the market imploded. Mm-hmm. And then we had a comeback, the Santa Claus bump, yeah. right? And then we had like a 27% S&P in 19. Yep. And then here we are now where the market got destroyed. <laughs> so you basically have traded like flat. Yeah. And yeah, because I, of the volatility in those indexed annuities is limited their ability to grow. 
actually talked about this. I sent a tweet out um, January 28th. You sent a tweet? I sent a tweet out tw- January 28th, 2018, compared to exactly today. Uh-huh. We were only 4% higher. So two and a half years, 4% higher. Correct. And if you're capped on your index annuities, that's why a lot of these things are growing you know, at nil. Mm-hmm. Right? Doesn't mean they're not going to grow in the future once some of this volatility subsides. Right? The original volatility was Donald Trump was tweeting. Right? <laughs> right? right? And then now we have coronavirus. Yeah. So and trade war and everything else added on top and uncertainty like, for the future unemployment rate high you have everything it sounds like a party it sounds like S- lots of fun so if you're out there right now and I'm telling you you're one of those people getting a buyout you're getting retired out and you're getting that lump sum or if you're trying to consider if you should even take the lump sum and you want to go over those prospects by all means call me because it might not be a good idea to take the buyout I honestly might tell you to stay where you're at do what you're doing. There's different things where they look at the overall payout in your lump sum and they look at your either your highest last three, four, or five. Well, if they're only giving you a two or three, you know, you might want to go question them and go, man, that's really not enough money. And I can help you calculate if it makes sense to take the lump sum, if you can actually go out and work. And the last thing I want you to worry about is where your retirement income check is going to come from. I'm telling you, the people that I've talked to that are being laid off recently, their biggest concern is, how do I get my money? Yeah. How do I spend it wisely? And just by organizing the cash flow and saying, here's what we're going to get you through for this month and this month and this month, why we are sorting everything out. So you can just live your life. Yep. Right. You don't want to do anything that's financially irreversible. Yeah. And let me, let me add to, you asked me earlier what, you know, the common misconception I see is one of the other big ones um, recently that came up was about two weeks ago because of the cares act people have access now to the 401ks Woo. and IRAs and taking Woo. up to a hundred thousand dollars out penalty free before age 59 and a half hundred thousand isn't that crazy so he, I had somebody come up to me and I say wish I had a they bell. were thinking about taking a hundred thousand dollars out of the 401k he was 53 years old doing and he was going to take that money and put it into an annuity. So not only was he going to take it out of his IRA, be taxed on all $100,000 of that, and put it into an annuity, that that is an irreversible financial mistake right there. And one, what, what my point I'm getting at is another misconception is you can take that money from an IRA um, and put it into another IRA when annuity. You get, so when, when you're 59 and a half, you can do an in-service distribution. Yeah, but when if he did that, when, when does he got to pay his tax bill again? Next year. Right. You got three years. You got three years. Well, you, you got three years to pay. Yep. You got three years three. to pay without interest. Yep. Or you can spread it out, I believe, right? Right. So Over three years, I yep. think. Right. It, is, it is three years. So yep. you want to So take if I made 3% on my money for three Ugh. years, I'm 9% ahead. Well, you're I'm, paying I'm, what? I'm what? You're saying, pay, just say you pay 20% on. taxes on the 100 k then you're already down 20 grand. No, then I'm going to put the money right back in. I've it, already just made 10% exactly. on that. This yeah. sounds like something Dave Ramsey would push, and nothing against Dave Ramsey. He's a smart guy. He helps pay people, pay off their bills, be like, Take out your, your 401k, yeah. taking a lump sum, completely disregarding people's tax brackets, you know, going, oh, did you really just add $100,000 right. of income? Right. Oh, great. You just got pushed into a 32% bracket or whatever. Right. It's like, thanks, Dave. But if you're doing it, <laughs> my point is, if you do this yourself, though, you might not realize that you, if let's say you're 65 years old and you have money in the IRA mm-hmm. and you're maybe looking for an annuity or something, yep. you can take that money from your IRA and put it into an annuity still that's tax deferred within the IRA wrapper with from an annuity. You don't have to take it down in a taxable account, pay taxes on that, and then put it into an annuity. That's a big misconception that I've been seeing more recently. Right. It's like at the end of the day, there are things that you can do and things that you can do that will help you. And I can at least point you in the right direction. Somebody can help you be pointed in the right direction. And if you're being let go currently, like I said, interview a few people. I don't, don't even... If you don't want to call me, because maybe you just think I'm a, a jerk, <laughs> call somebody. Not that far off, though. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm pretty close. Um, but no, call somebody and make sure that you're doing your due diligence. Don't take that first offer. It's okay to shop around your old insurance agent, even though he's a nice guy. Find out what he has and take it to another advisor and say, tell me why or why I shouldn't buy this. Because if you bring me something that's the best thing since sliced bread and you've had a relationship with this advisor for 10 years, I'm going to tell you to go back and buy it from him. Yeah. Because I mean, he, he's, he's earned your business. I'm, I'm not going to, you know what I mean? But if you bring me something that's terrible, I'm going to say, here's why you wouldn't do that. Here's what I would do. And, uh, you know, if you still like your guy, go back to your guy and tell him this is what I want. You know, I'm not going to be mad at you. Um, but you need to, you know, 
dot your I's and cross your T's when it comes to this kind of environment. Yep. The you world only, is nuts right now. You only get one chance at it. Right. You can't go back and change anything. Are you sure? It's all, it's all hindsight, right? I mean, I, hindsight's 2020, right? I have a DeLorean. Yeah. <laughs> I have a flux capacitor. So did you hear Nike just came out with those shoes, the uh, the self-tying shoes? Yeah. The, one of our that? Yeah, because one, of our, one of our interns has them. Yeah. One of our interns has these self-tying Nike shoes. So I guess, like, you know, it's coming about. Next thing you know, we are going to have a DeLorean that travels back. In, I like already have it. I already have it. Going back in time. That's a good song. Is that a Huey Lewis in the news? Is it? I'm pretty sure. That's Mark. Is that Huey? Uh, that could be right. That could be. I'm almost I'm positive my dad was a big Huey Go fan. back in time. Huey Lewis Definitely in the news. Definitely is. <laughs> there we That's go. I'm guitar. glad I knew that. I'm glad I knew that. <laughs> Luke, Luke, I play real guitar. Yeah. Luke, Luke knows something in the world. Yeah. I know it's hot in the studio, but... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyways good old, good old topics yeah anyways um again if you have any questions give me a call 216-800-9890 or go to my website trg.swpconnect.com where you can catch up on past shows or you can book an appointment directly with me again it's 216-800-9890 um, or if you have questions by all means call leave a voicemail and i will talk about your question on next week's show you know when you think about this annuity world it, it this is one of the probably I don't know. There's a lot of important areas when it comes to your retirement. But doesn't this seem to be one of those worlds where you really need to get the straight facts? I mean, that this is not this is not a type of product just to be sold something. You need to understand why and the Shouldn't reasons for it. Shouldn't that be everything in your life? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's I mean, not how we work. I mean, is isn't, I mean in today's world, I, th- I feel like we're seeing more that's based on emotion. But I, nothing in life should be based, especially financially, should be based on emotion. Like, no, and that's – so nothing finan- – anything in your life you should always – double check right there's a reason why i like my nephrologist my uh, and I'll, I'll say his name is dr andrew lazar i like my nephrologist because he's an open practical thinker he's open to discussion he just doesn't throw drugs at me and say hey here's what we're taking that's a good thing so when i go hey i've read some literature on these things and here are my concerns he explains why I should and the benefits outweigh. And then he says, if for some reason you're not feeling well on this, call me and we'll make an adjustment, right? So it's the same thing in your financial world that you should be able to ask your advisor questions if you're uncomfortable. You should be able to have an open conversation with your advisor about what you're buying and not just take basic information and say that's Bible, right? That's what I'm going with. You should be able to ask those questions and they should be able to eloquently tell you um, why you're doing something and give you mathematical reasoning behind it. Yeah. And, and if you feel like you're being sold something by somebody, you probably are. So Correct. you should never feel like you're being sold something. And if you are, if you do think you're being sold something, ask the questions. If you buy an annuity from me, I can always tell you why. If we are in a stock portfolio, I can tell you why. If I have you in a bond portfolio, I can tell you why. Yeah, or a mixture of all three. I can tell you why. <laughs> correct, correct. And your advisor should be able to do that. And if he gets apprehensive or defensive, whatever the word is, um, again, ask someone else and make sure what you have is right for you. It's important that you do what's best for you and not just take it on a guy going, well, this company's a mutual company that's been around for 100 years, and it was born on the backs of this family, and they give to churches, so you should buy some stuff. Look at what happened (laughs) to all these companies that existed now for 100 years. Some of them are blowing up, and (laughs) they're not existing anymore. Yeah, it's, when I first started selling insurance, you know, 17 years ago, uh, I used to work for this company, Um, you know, it was a mutual company, and I found it fascinating that they always promoted um, their mutual company and they're such good this and their financials are so strong and everything about them was great right so I'd go into households and I would tell them because I'm new I go oh you know this company such and such it's so great it's great because of this because of that it's a mutual company it's in this beautiful valley in a Roanoke Valley and sounds like you're selling something 500 <laughs> employees you know sounds like I'm selling something yeah. correct that same strong mutual company went into receivership in 2008 mm-hmm. because they made some bad bets on yep. say mortgage backed securities. That's all it takes is one thing. Right. So just because the guy is telling you this company has been around for a hundred years, 150 years, and because they're generous doesn't mean that their financials are that good. Yeah. 
And that's why you need to do a little bit of homework. And if it feels like you're being sold something, you probably are in, again, double check. That's all. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Call somebody. Call me. I can't even say that every week now. Call who, me. Who, call you, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. <laughs> there you go. Right. Yeah. So, again, you have questions, you have concerns. What about this annuity stuff? Does it make sense? And, and it might make perfect sense. There is no question about it. There are some great annuities out there. It's The question is, do you have the right one for you in your situation? 216-800-9890 is the number. 216-800-9890. And, of course, the website Doug talking about is trg.swpconnect.com. trg.swpconnect.com. Now, Doug and Luke might go a little bit more on the annuity world. I'm not sure. I don't have any control over these two, so I just let them go where they want. But I want to hear more about if you've been laid off and you've got the opportunity for that buyout, why should you? Why should you not? We're going to look at some of those situations right after this. Stay with us. This is the Retirement Guys with Doug Harbaugh and Luke Lloyd with Strategic Wealth Partners. Welcome back to the Retirement Guys with Doug Harbaugh. Doug, of course, an advisor with Strategic Wealth Partners. They have decades of experience under one roof helping folks with their retirement plans. Here in the Independence, Cleveland, and Northeast Ohio area, uh, they have their own CPA group that they work with. They work in the Wall Street world. They work in the insurance world, the world of life insurance and annuities. We've been talking about annuities on the program. And, of course, also with us, Luke Lloyd, an investment strategist with Strategic Wealth Partners. I'm Mark Elliott. Uh, we've been talking about annuities. We're going to change the topic. And, Doug, I was going to go to you but then i found out that young luke is looked at for all the answers from like u.s news and world report they say hey luke can you give us an idea on these buyouts that companies are doing yeah. should we yeah. take it or not huh? yeah no he just happens to be in the right place when mark's punting uh an article no but it was, it was money.com and I, I talked about um buyouts and it was actually really interesting conversation that i had um, and I'm going to say the exact line that I said there that I think uh, is definitely reasonable. The best buyout is one that can bridge the gap between now and when you want to reach retirement. That is the exact line. So you need to figure out when you want to retire and if the buyout exactly fits your mold, what you are want we to seeing achieve. More, are we seeing more, as you before you get into all that, I mean, are we seeing more of these opportunities where companies are going, look, we're going to lay some people off, whether it's airlines or what have you. We want to get you off our books, by the way, and put ourselves in a better position as a company going forward. Oh, absolutely. So, hey, take the yeah. lump sum and let's move on it, kind of a thing. It benefits both both parties. I mean, that's why they're doing it. It kind of benefits both parties. And that's why when you're getting these offers, you have to weigh, you know, like, should I take this? Because what is the balance sheet of this company? So sometimes you might not have an alternative. Like, you literally need to take the money and run. Right. Right. Well, Th that's just well, again. That's, that's the thing. Sometimes you have a choice. It's either voluntary or involuntary, right? So, I mean, if they're giving you this buyout offer, most of the time they're, you know, they're going to push you out anyway. So you have to understand where you're at, your situation, because if you feel like you're being pushed out, you don't have much bargaining power, right? So, I mean, you're in already in a bad spot at that place. But if they are giving the option between staying and giving this buyout offer to leave, then you maybe have some negotiating power where you can look at, hey, say, hey, you know, does this buyout you know, offer fit my mold? Like, does it make me, allow me to reach retirement at this certain age that I wanted to achieve or does it allow, allow me to retire now? Or, you know, what are the exact terms? Or you know, are there certain things that I can do with this offer and maybe spread out the payments over time to save on taxes? There's certain strategies you can utilize with this. Also, I think a lot of people need to keep their mouth shut about when they want to retire. Mm -hmm. So in this current climate, um, comp I think a lot of people you know, if they're just talking in general to their coworkers, he, you know, I've always wanted to retire at 61 or, you know, I'm going to be 61 next year. So I think I'm going to hand on my walking papers. Your HR department doesn't need to know when you want to retire. Okay. Because it'll actually remove the amount of leverage that you have. And they might actually might not make you an offer because they're expecting you to retire. I want to retire next year. Yeah. <laughs> 12 years old. Um, so you have to be careful about the knowledge that um, your employers do have when it comes to your retirement. If they get an idea that you're going to retire anyways, why would they give you money to go away? Yeah. I'm not saying it's likely, but you know, be quiet. Well, it's don't show, <laughs> don't show your cards, right? I mean, that's the whole point of be it. Be quiet. Right? It's the whole point of being, you know, playing <laughs> poker. Don't show your cards. Don't let everybody know what you need. No, I just want you to shut up. No, I'm kidding. No, it's, it's important. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's important that there's some things that you need to keep to yourself because it gives you leverage, okay? No matter how you feel about your current circumstance, be quiet because in this current economy, it's very plausible, depending on the industry that you're in, that they're gonna be starting to do buyouts mm -hmm. all over the place. They already are. And let's make sure you're in a position 
or they're going to give you the best offer that they have. So, you know, you think about this because, you know, hypothetically speaking, I was a really high ranking, uh, you know, front office person for Blockbuster. And I had this opportunity, but I said, no, I want to take the company pension the way it was designed. <laughs> then they went out of business and I lost all my money. So, I mean, there is a lot where we have to really look maybe a little deeper, don't we, than just here's your buyout options, here's your pension option the way it was designed. Then, as you were saying, Doug, we kind of have to look at the company and the strength, and we don't really know. Sometimes we're caught by surprise. Enron or Blockbuster or Kodak Film and you know all that kind of stuff. Well, yeah. I mean, it's everything's changing, it seems. How yeah. do we make that decision? You call me. <laughs> that would be 216-800-9890. There you go. Well, there, there again, there's too many variables to give some general advice necessarily on, you know, whether to take it or whether not to take it. Because, again, not only do you have the variables in your own situation, whether it be when you want to retire or your salary, your savings, your expenses, but you also have the variables within the contract itself, the offer. So you can't it's hard to give some general advice here. But what I can say is, like you mentioned, um, like a pension, if the company goes out and you do kind of take this income or the stream off of that uh, buyout offer, whatever, whatever it be then you are susceptible to that maybe being away, gone you know, by the time if the company does go bankrupt down the road. So it might make some sense to take that lump sum um, right away. Um, that way you don't aren't susceptible to those changes in the environment that you worked in. Um, but maybe you have more control over your own personal situation. But what you can do, again, is maybe spread out those lump sum payments over two, three, four years to save it on taxes because it's not going to be qualified money. So you can't roll that money over into an IRA. So you are going to be taxed on the lump sum all at once and that's going to be a very heavy tax burden if you have four hundred five hundred thousand dollar buyout and that's you're saying if i got a five hundred thousand dollar buyout i'd have to pay the taxes on it that year yes or what you can try to do is spread that money out over three four five years and try to at least minimize your taxes that way so again that's negotiation tactics that you need tactics that you need to use with your employer um, if you are given a buyout offer and see what you can do that sounds like i need some help (laughs) figuring out the direction i need to go and I would think that's the challenge. You know, you, you think about, you know, we've talked about it before, the challenge of losing a spouse. Well, you lose a job. It's not the same emotional hit, but it can be a big emotional hit. You know, I'm losing my job. They're offering me a buyout. Holy cow, it's $500,000. I, I guess I'd be better having, what, uh, what is it, a bird in the hand and a cat in the stew? I don't know what it I is. I don't know that one. <laughs> You're, that's over my head. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's like, okay, well, I, maybe I should just take it and run, and then we'll figure it all out later. But if we do that, we could be causing ourselves some pretty serious tax implications then did you really say you worked for blockbuster i did that was just kind of a hypothetical i said oh Oh, i thought thought you were being serious man it's hypothetical i was like you're a blockbuster executive i'm like tell me about that i really wanted to go down before i was born or something there i wanted to go down that rabbit hole badly i'm kind of sad it was a hypothetical i said a hypothetical i kind of slid that in (laughs) i i i didn't hear that all i heard is you're a high-ranking executive 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 and i was like oh brother we're going down that rabbit hole (laughs) i would love to hear that story yeah yeah darn it because you think about it i mean there are companies that we think are going to be around forever and a lot of them are but boy some of them are not you think of enron they're going to pay you know they they're 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 their employees got a lot of enron stock hey that's great what a great company and the next thing you know they're they're bankrupt look at wirecard I mean, the yeah. most recent one, Wirecard, over in Germany. They're missing $2.1 billion accounting fraud. What's that chump change? <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I guess in big scheme of things yeah, it is, but not for the uh, company itself. Valued at $25 billion, now worth $200 uh, million. Jesus. But anyway, yeah, but yeah, I mean, there's so many different variables. I mean, think about the milk business. I mean, we bring this up a lot, Doug, when we're teaching classes and stuff. Think about the milk business. We have powdered milk. We have coconut milk, almond milk. We have all these different, you know, milk alternatives now. And what, what was it, Dean's Dairy Farm? Or it was a business that went out that everyone thought would be Correct. around forever. So. My, my old business partner used to like saying, we've got that fancy dancy milk <laughs> at uh, Whole Foods that cost you $6 a gallon. Um, yeah, it's true. I mean, even, you know, Dean Derry um, had some uh, financial problems there. So, yeah, I mean, industries that you don't expect to go away have been going away. And we're only going to see more of that based on what's happening economically. And that's why having investments in companies with strong balance sheets, um, strong product offerings, and they have things that are going to weather, you know, this next economy because the stock market is overvalued. Currently. Oh, it is. No, no fundamental analyst would ever say that we're trading where we should be. Correct. But still, I find it hard to believe that owning Microsoft is a bad thing. 
owning Walmart is a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. How how is that a problem, right? So I have a hard justification for people that want to get out of the market. And again, if you want to get out of the market, fine. But don't just go to cash and do nothing. Like there's things that you can do. And that's where we talk about the, the multi-year guaranteed annuity. You know, take some of your money. If you're really afraid of the market, pull some of it off. Put it in a three-year MIGA. Yeah. Get get 3% on your money. Do something. Don't f- f- Just don't put it in the cash. Yeah, and like we talked about this, these buyout you know, opportunities, yeah. you can take a portion. If you want one of those income streams, the same thing with, with pensions. Uh-huh. If you get a lump sum or a annuitized income stream for life, the thing is with, with lump sums, you have options. You have flexibility. When you take that, when you annuitize that pension, again, that money disappears. It's going to be annuitized forever. You're not going to be able to access that money. So if you want some sort of income stream, you can take a lump sum option. Again, if it's a pension, you can roll that over to an IRA. So you can invest a portion of that, maybe use 20% of that for an income stream down the road. So that way you have, again, flexibility because you don't want to be, you don't want your, your shoes uh, tied and strapped down the floor. You can't move. You, you want flexibility. Correct. So you said in a pension, I can roll it to the IRA. Correct. So that's that's going to be different than, than a buyout. The buyout right? Correct. Correct. That is a completely two different things because it's going to be uh, considered Even they're income. they're the same thing, the same company. They, me they, the they aren't the same thing because it's going to be considered salary. So, for example, when a buyout opportunity comes, typically the uh, money that they're giving is for maybe two, three times salary or something like that. So it's going to be it, and not I, your tax it, deferred. It non- also depends how it works. So, I mean, first energy guys that have been getting buyouts are getting like just severance for a year. Right. So it depends on how. Well, and if it's severance, if it's severance, <clears throat> it's going to be taxable. Well, so. it, it is. It's because it's income. Right. So most of these buyouts are like that. But again, like you, you are saying, every situation is different. That's well, why you do have to take a look at the exact terms, but most are going to be taxed. But no, and that's why I talked about it earlier when I was talking about like the different products. You have to think about it. Now, I'm going to rattle them off. I mean, between Allianz, American Equity, American General, American National, Equitrust, Fidelity, Forethought, Great American, Guggenheim, Lafayette, Liberty, Lincoln, National, North American, Penn, oh. Mutual, Protective Life, Reliance, Standard, Stage Core, Security Benefit, Sentinel Life, Symmetra. That's so extra, Doug. Right? <laughs> but you, all those the companies, key is, I think Guggenheim owns the Dodgers <laughs> right and that's all that matters to you but the, the the point I'm getting at is with all these availabilities uh, into products you have to make sure that you're not just buying you know something that some guy is selling you right these are all the companies that I can work with that I just rattle off and there, there's more than that so it's important to know that there's more products than what this guy is telling you right for your buyout um, there's options out there and make sure you find the one that suits you best. Read the fine print, right? And, and that's why I wanted to and do this if you don't want show. to read the fine print, we'll do it for you. So. I'll read it for you. I would love to do a Shakespeare, uh, Shakespearean um, like annuity um, production where I stand up there and, uh, but soft, what light through yonder window oh, breaks. wear all the different clothes, It is too. the east, and Juliet is the sun, and this annuity has a 10-year surrender. I I'll can be, do it that I'll way. I'll be Juliet for you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure that's how they used to do it, though, back in the day, was that I think yeah, all the guys played it. Just yeah. give me credit that I remembered some of that play verbatim. <laughs> so if you have questions yeah. about Shakespeare and the like, it's 216-800-9890. And, well, really, seriously, if you have that opportunity where your company is offering you a buyout or the options to take the, the you know, maybe it's severance pay. Those kind of things are big, and you're going to be taxed. You need to make the right decisions with your money while you have the opportunity that's where Doug and Luke and the team at Strategic Wealth Partners, they're here to help you. And if you're doing the right thing, if you have an idea because you're working with an advisor and here's the advisor's idea and you want a second opinion, you can call Doug and Luke, 216-800-9890. And if you're getting the, the right advice for your situation, they will tell you that. 216-800-9890 is the number, 216 800 9890. You can always go to the website, trg.swpconnect.com. Don't forget, you can do the portfolio x-ray, your top 10 holdings, and fill it in. Doug will get back to you with what how it shakes out for you. That is the portfolio x-ray right there on the website, trg.swpconnect.com. We're headed to our final segment with the retirement guys, Doug Harbaugh and Luke Lloyd. So if you're going to go on vacation with your wife and your two-and-a-half-year-old daughter, why do you pick Hilton Head? That's where we're going next. Stay with us. This is The Retirement Guys with Doug Harbaugh and Luke Lloyd. 
Glad you're with us today for the Retirement Guys with Doug Harbaugh and Luke Lloyd with Strategic Wealth Partners. You can find out more on the website, trg.swpconnect.com, trg.swpconnect.com. There's a Wealth Allies on there. There's Portfolio X-Ray on there. There's some things you can do to find out a little bit more about your specific situation, trg.swpconnect.com. Com. We've talked annuities. We've talked, hey, you're, you're getting laid off. You're getting the severance pay for a year's salary. Uh, you Maybe you're getting the opportunity for a buyout. What are some of your options in making the right decision? Well, one is just calling the team and having them help guide you through this. 216-800-9890, 216-800-9890. Because these are big decisions to make. And you make the wrong decision, what could happen? Probably uh, run out of money maybe yeah uh, that doesn't sound like too bad of a time who i mean doesn't everyone want to be broke i enjoyed i enjoyed you know um you know in my early 20s when i yeah, didn't yeah. have money for food <laughs> but you think about it these are <laughs> big decisions these are far-reaching decisions that you can't just go in like luke said earlier and just make an emotional decision there's got to be some math mm-hmm. behind this decision i would imagine no doesn't I don't everyone know, that's what just Luke tried to tell me? Doesn't everyone just wing it and do that? Uh, so most of us do it out yeah. of the box mutual fund portfolio. Absolutely, we it, wing it. I mean, we don't really know. We don't really know. It doesn't sound like a very good solution to me. So no. what you need to do? I mean, like I said, there's so many many things that goes into it, and you can't take those out of box solutions. You can't take Correct. you know what everyone else is kind of just doing. Since you maybe into a model portfolio, and never look at it ever again. I mean, that's that's not going to be individual to you. You need something individual, something that's going to fit your situation. If you don't, then the person next to you is not going to have the same that's financial plan. Weird. As you. I feel like I've heard someone say that before. I'm just learning from you, Doug. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I learned from you, Dan. <laughs> Learn it from That's you. How I feel sometimes. You know, yeah. and what he just said there, Doug. I mean, it's kind of the the old way of doing it was buy and hold, right? You Correct. Just, hey, don't worry, it's going to come back. Don't worry, just buy it and then hold on to it because it's <clears> time <throat> in the market. It's not really the timing of the market. C- correct. But the buy and hold is really not the, in today's world of volatility, it's maybe not the way to go. No, I mean, the 60-40 portfolio has made a comeback this year, and that's 60%, you know, stocks, 40% bonds has made a comeback after, you know, we bottomed out here a few months ago. But that 60-40 portfolio, um, if it wasn't rebalanced accordingly to bring it back into that 60-40, it, I'm sure it's out of whack. Oh, absolutely. So there's things that you systematically need to do, um, you know, quarterly, monthly, annually, semi-annually, in order to make your portfolios more efficient. Um, you know, it's it's okay. Well, how often do you sit but, down with your clients and talk about that? Is it an annual thing, or you might have some that are checking in more often because so, they're more concerned? Well, I guess, due to the craziness the last few years, I, I have a higher level of contact with my clients. Um, you know, I, I just call. I'll literally call clients as I'm driving. Yeah. Um, just to touch base. Um, typically, we do an in-depth plan refresh annually where we go back through the planning process to make sure that you know nothing's changed or what do we need to make adjustments on when it comes to the portfolios. Um, do we need distributions to help grandkids? Are there weddings coming up? Are you buying a boat? How do we withdraw correctly? Um, so we do that annually. Um, then we have multiple events throughout the year where we invite people in. And um, like I said, I, I just call my clients and chat with them. Well, recently, here's the thing, I mean, with the craziness, with how the markets have been, with, you know, ever-changing information, with, uh, you know, how maybe people are getting laid off. I, I, what I'll say is we've been calling clients a lot more recently over the past three, four months, being in contact communication um, than in the past. And the thing is, if your advisor has not contacted you in the past three, four, five months, that's an issue. I will that's absolutely weird. say I, I, that. I feel like I heard someone say that, too. Who <laughs> said that? I don't know. We, everyone's everyone says this, I, similar stuff in the office. I feel I guess. like someone said that verbatim, and he probably was pretty handsome. And probably bald too. Yeah, with a beard. Maybe. Was his name Doug? Maybe. Oh, it's fascinating. Yeah, it's, your your guy should be in contact with you. I mean, I, I, I like my clients, so I, I call them and just chat with them. Um, I'm going out of town, so I will probably call all of my clients over the next two days um, to make sure they don't need anything to let them know that I'm not going to be around and here's who you contact um, because I would like a few days of just um, sandcastle time, um, shark tooth searching, and um, some seashell um, searching as well. Seashell? Yeah, seashell. Seashells by the seashore. (laughs) It's um, (laughs) it's nice to actually just have a few days with my daughter to do things. um, Are you going to wear a mask on the beach? Other than work, no. 
No. So yeah, so I'm like I said, I'm going to Vegas. So they now have, I think, a rule that you have to wear a mask by the pool. So I'm going to be getting a tan line with a mask. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I like it. But it, it's it, have fun in Vegas. But Luke, you will not see me for the next month. No, I'm so sad about it. <laughs> right. 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 I'm but out. We of are going to be doing the radio shows though, virtually. Perhaps. So I might fire you and just bring on Katie, our our <laughs> um, producing uh, intern on the show. Get another twenty-year-old in, get insight. some nice uh, insight about you know video editing, and <clears throat> she does a great job with all of her videos. Yeah. So yeah, but no. Yeah. So I'm, again, that number is two one six eight hundred ninety eight ninety. If you have questions, you like the ooh, I like the fact that that Doug and Luke they they actually talk to their clients. They're not saying ooh, it's a bad time, so I'm not going to talk, and there's nobody available to answer my questions. They're here to mm-hmm. help you. Two one six eight hundred ninety eight ninety. The website trg.swpconnect.com. And I wonder if your wife tomorrow is ever sad that it's always about your daughter, Olivia. Do you not enjoy spending time with tomorrow? I mean, she's going to go on your vacation. Do you know, actually, right? you know, when you think about relationships in general, um, <clears throat> I, I have thought about that where I wonder if my wife does get a little jealous of the amount of love and affection that I do shower in my daughter. I mean, seriously, if you think about it, like yeah. you can get carried away um, as a father with your child, if you're an involved father, um, and you can actually neglect your wife, it's, it's very feasible. Um, I'm going to ask her when I get home tonight. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't say any more. Just yeah. ask her. <laughs> no, I don't care. Um, but no, it's, it's pretty re- Like I'm really affectionate with my daughter. Um, I probably say I love you to my daughter 10 times a day. Yeah. Um, we're big on huggies and we're big on, on kissing and, you know, we're, we're big on affection. So, yeah, you know, maybe I should just go home and ignore Olivia tonight and um, be nice to my wife. I don't think she'd appreciate that, though. No, my wife probably like, just go <laughs> away. Take take your daughter I outside. I bet your daughter wouldn't appreciate that. I'm sure yeah. she would uh, be all over. Where's daddy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So why Hilton Head? I mean, you're not going to go in the ocean, are you? You're going to go about, what, calf high? Um, toe high. Toe, toe high. high. There is sea monsters. No, Hilton Head, I just like it. It's a good so are you f- making Olivia scared of the ocean now, too, then? No, no. I, I try not to allow any of my insecurities um, <laughs> um, to grow on my daughter. So like, you don't I, like the water, seriously? Like, you don't like the water at all? No, not really. Like, um, even pools? Oh, pools are cool. Okay. Um, be a riptide, swim with it, yada, yada. I'm not into no, being— No, don't swim with it. Swim sideways. On the sideways. Riptides. Yeah, yeah, sideways. Get out of the riptide. Get out don't of the go, That's what I mean. Don't go against it. See, I would go, go sideways. My luck, I'd go against it. Yeah, so Hilton Head's a good family f- family city. Um, it's clean. Um, there's usually not parties like Myrtle Beach. Um, so it's um, that's why I like it. There's nothing wrong with Myrtle Beach if that's your style. Um, but last time I was in Myrtle Beach, I had to go down to the beach after I just put my daughter down and basically tell a gentleman if he lights another firework off, him and I are going to have a problem. Um, <laughs> and um, he, he politely left um, because he knew that I was serious, that if you woke up my daughter, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> you don't get that in Hilton Head, and that's what I like. So I like, <laughs> I'm going like, to drive down there and light some fireworks off. Yeah, Hilton Head's beautiful. Um, do not light um, professional fireworks off in front of my condo. We will have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care how patriotic you are. <laughs> Go away. My daughter just went to bed. <laughs> so that's going to be fun, though, for you. Yeah, we're going to have a good time. Just man. get away. Yep. Yeah. Walks yeah. on the beach, runs on the beach, sandcastles, swimming, and snacks. Can't go wrong with snacks. Nope. Sea- she sells seashells by the seashore in Hilton Head. That was good. I hate that one. But that's because it. really, this is a this is I think because it is such a crazy time. I mean, sometimes you do just have to get away from it all. To oh, it's kind important. Of re-energize. It's I think. important for the mental health too. I mean, when I, it comes down to it, we talked about decisions today, right? The logical and emotional side, and especially now, it's very easy to make emotional decisions just because it's hard to disconnect from everything that's going on. I have not disconnected since uh, September first of uh, twenty nineteen. So yeah. I'm due. Yep. Taking a few days off to go home and do stuff at your house is not a vacation. Actually, I think it makes it more uh, you more productive over time anyway. Dis- disconnecting for a couple of days instead of just continuously grinding actually makes you more productive over the years. Oh, no kidding. I've only been doing it for 20 years. Maybe that's my problem is because I always grind. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's important to grind, but it's important to know you- you know when to disconnect to so yeah what if doug comes back and he's all super duper happy he's going to be i'm very excited about it no i usually am i'm usually (laughs) like pretty like um pretty in a good mood um for months like i can weather just about anything before i get grumpy again okay well i like it well you you and tomorrow and your daughter olivia have a great trip when do you go to vegas uh week and a half i go the uh, july 11th 
Okay. Well, all right. You guys both have good times and re-energize. Uh, if you have questions about anything you heard, we talked about annuities. We talked about, hey, what if you were laid off? What if you got a severance check for a year or two or you got the lump sum buyout versus the pension? Those are big decisions. This is your opportunity to talk with the team at Strategic Wealth Partners, Doug Harbaugh, Luke Lloyd, 216-800-9890, 216 800-9890. And if you'd like to do the portfolio x-ray, put your top 10 holdings in. Doug will get back to you and tell you, hey, you're doing great here. Maybe you need a little tweak there. or Maybe it's all good or maybe it's all bad. Hopefully that's not the case. 216-800-9890. The website, trg.swpconnect.com. Guys, you guys enjoy your little break, and we'll uh, chat again next weekend. See you. See you, Mark.